Judicial elections, love them or hate them, they're in at least 35 states across the country. Now, despite that, more than half of the states in the U.S. hold these elections. The question still remains, is the election process really just? Now, last week, uh, the la I'm sorry, last week tonight host John Oliver, I always screw up the name of that show, essentially, he ripped the process of partner in his program. Now, I can't play the whole 13 minutes, but I'll show you a couple of clips. Basically, his point was having to shake down super PACs and attorneys for campaign donations is hardly the best way to get an impartial person behind the bench. He also pointed to the fact the election process could also lead to potential biases from the bench, depending on who those contributors are. The problem with an elected judiciary is sometimes the right decision is neither easy nor popular. And yet, campaigns force judges to look over their shoulder on every ruling. Because while political attack ads can be aggressive, judicial attack ads can be downright horrifying. I was convicted of stabbing my victims with a kitchen knife. Of shooting my ex-girlfriend and murdering her sister in front of our child. Of sexual assault on a mom and her 10-year-old daughter. <laughs> then I slashed their throats. On appeal, Justice Thomas Kilbride sided with us. Over law enforcement or victims. Oh, my God. <laughs> Good luck getting back into whatever you were watching after seeing that commercial. <laughs> and it goes on, guys, here. Trust me, there's some bad ones. I also want to play a clip. This is from attorneys. I want you guys to think about this. Imagine you get from judges um, basically fundraising letters and say, hey, guys, I got a fundraiser, and you know you're appearing before this judge. Well, uh, this is what one attorney had to say. For attorneys like Jules Olsman, this is the most expensive time of the year. Election season is when lawyers like him have to dig deepest into their wallets. That's because every hour or so, he'll get a call from a judge's campaign looking for a contribution. It's very hard to say no. It's impossible to say no. <laughs> I, you know, we say this, I'll get in the back of this to what's the better alternative, but it just doesn't feel right. You know, and, and for me, you ask anybody, I'm sorry, the regular voting public, you guys know these judges by name, They've, you've worked, you've, you've, you've had cases before, but for the most of us, maybe it's, I recognize the sign or something, it's, you go to West Virginia, and if the coal company is going to decide whether or not they're going to fund your campaign or not, that's what's going to make the difference or not, whether you're elected or not. Uh, this, is, this is messed up. Uh, there's, we make fun of uh, politics, and rightfully so, but... To extend it to judges, you guys comfortable with this? You know, it's such a hard question because if you don't do it by way of election, then you do it by way of appointment. And that's and political then, too. And that's political. And I guess I'm probably most in favor of some kind of a nomination process with a debate that follows, so that you have at least the issues put out there by by you know people from both sides, so that uh, whoever is doing the voting is making a more informed and less political choice, but it's a tough question. Well, there's sort of a fallacy at the heart of what he's saying because super PACs and all of that, all federal judges are appointed and have life tenure, so that's, that's a non-starter. The only place where judges are elected is are in states, and that's a state's rights issue, and also it's sort of a damned if you do, damned if you don't process. After Citizens United, for example, yeah. people were saying, oh, they shouldn't have life tenure, they should be subjected to impeachment or elections or whatever. We have it right here with the New York Court of Appeals, where they're appointed for 14-year terms. So right. you get a, a long enough uh, tenure where you're not going to be chilled in judicial independence, but you're not there for life if you're making totally outrageous decisions. But Doug, as it relates to, I know this is all politics, I'm not naive, I mean people want to get put on the appellate court, they want to move up the food chain here, you got to be careful you don't uh, tweak, it's not your necessarily your case record that's going to be the biggest determinant. But it seems there's got to be a better way than that. By the way, that ad that showed the, the three guys, you know, it turned out it wasn't true. Uh, you know, so, I mean, don't let facts get in the way of a good story. But that happens, and now who's got the most amount of money to run phony ads to Lawyer, be a judge? Lawyers don't have to worry about truth. Yeah. That's the first rule of the Listen, story. it's an imperfect system either way you have it. I mean, but anytime you take the, uh, the decision-making process away from the people, I think you're in danger. Just like we all believe in jury trials here, we, we want that as the, the backstop. Yep. That's really an election of, uh, you know, of your judges is the same thing. The people get to speak. Well, okay. when you look at judicial elections, it's the one election where the candidate doesn't really get to tell you anything about himself or herself. So they can't tell you their opinions about yeah. anything. So, so if that's the case, 
number one, there should be no money involved in that. No outside money should be permitted to come in. None of us should be allowed as lawyers to make a donation. That's what I think. It should be taxpayer subsidized, a limited cap, what you're allowed to do. There should be mandated uh, debates yeah. um, that's, again, subsidized by the public. But we don't have, you know, like an arms race in terms of how much you can spend here to do misleading ads and then getting in bed with folks who got to do it. All right, I really want to get to the next one because when we come back on the other side of the break, a Manhattan federal court says Palestinian officials must pay up for a terror attack in Israel that kid killed nearly a dozen Americans. Why Palestinian authorities are vowing to appeal the ruling. We'll be right back with that.